The 1930s introduced a lot of legendary aircraft that were active during World War II, and the aircraft of the BF-109 series are, without any doubt, among the most recognizable vehicles of the era. Today we are going to discuss the most effective ways to use these iconic fighters in battle. The BF-109A and the BF-109B1 variants are Rank 1 aircraft that are not as agile as their primary rivals but can go pretty fast. A 620 horsepower engine allows them to reach a max speed of 444 kilometers an hour. Not bad for an aircraft that faces biplanes and early monoplanes. With either of the early models, energy preservation is a must and try to stay out of dogfights. Both fighters are armed with two 7.92 mm machine guns. That's not enough firepower to intercept even the earliest of bombers, but lighter targets are a different story. The BF-109E1 variant is equipped with four machine guns, allowing you to deal with enemies a little bit faster. And late Emils, namely the E3, E4, E7, and the E7U2, get cannons. Two 20mm wing-mounted guns with 60 rounds of ammo each make short work of Rank 1 bombers and can wreck enemy fighters with just a couple of hits. Not to mention that Emils have a more powerful engine, allowing them to easily get away from dangerous foes. All in all, we suggest that you take full advantage of your speed and firepower, use hit-and-run tactics, and prevent enemies from climbing to your altitude. It's worth noting, though, that in the hands of a skilled pilot, the BF-109E is no slouch in a turn fight either. Also, remember that Emils can carry bombs, four 50kg ones or a single 250kg. In mixed battles, bombs are simply a must-have. If there are enemy aircraft in the air, choose the second option, as it's faster and safer to drop just one bomb. If there are no enemies in the sky, feel free to take four smaller ones. Once again, if you're skilled enough, each of them can score you a frag, for a total of four. And smaller bombs are also not as heavy, so there's less additional weight affecting the performance of your aircraft. The same piece of advice applies to early Friedrich variants as well. The first and the second BF-109F are significantly superior to their opponents, both in terms of speed and maneuverability making them extra scary when they have an altitude advantage. Furthermore, German engineers got rid of wing-mounted armaments. Instead, the BF-109F had a 20mm cannon firing through the propeller shaft. That meant that the aircraft packed a bit less of a punch, but the nose-mounted gun also made aiming a lot easier. As a result, aircraft of the 109F series have an easier time fighting other fighters, but can struggle a bit against well-protected bombers. When designing the F-2 variant, German engineers tried to solve this problem by giving the fighter eight light rockets. But later there was the F-4 variant, which received an even more practical solution. When fully decked out, this fighter has both a 20mm hub cannon and a couple of 15mm cannons. That's more than enough firepower to tear any bomber apart in seconds. If you're planning to engage other fighters, though, we suggest that you should leave the gun pods at home. This way, the aircraft will be significantly lighter, and even in its original configuration, the BF-109F4 has enough ammo to destroy a whole flight of single-engine fighters. Not to mention that without the additional cannons, this Friedrich can outturn most opponents at its rank. The BF-109G2 is a great hit-and-run fighter thanks to its new engine, providing more speed and giving it an even better rate of climb. The aircraft also has access to more powerful wing-mounted guns. You get 20mm cannons instead of the regular 15mm guns, allowing you to be even more aggressive with your head-on attacks. The G6 variant is fairly demanding in terms of skill when used against other fighters. It still has the upper hand when it comes to pure speed and rate of climb, but it's a good idea to stay out of dogfights. Your primary goal at the start of a match is to intercept enemy bombers, and only then is it a good idea to switch to fighters. The good news is that the aircraft can be armed with a brand new 30mm cannon that can deal critical damage to a flying fortress with just a single hit. 
It's worth mentioning that this cannon is considerably harder to use than the 20mm one, due to its tricky ballistics, so get ready to spend some time mastering the weapon if you want to land hits on smaller targets. The G6 can also carry 210mm rockets. In real life, they were used against bombers, but they're also pretty effective against ground targets in Ground RB. The G10 and the G14 variants are very similar to the G6 that you're already familiar with. Yes, they are faster, but their enemies aren't twiddling their thumbs either. Most opponents can easily outturn both of them, and sometimes can even catch up with them. Our suggestion is to climb high right at the start of the match, far away from the center of the map. Take down a couple of enemy bombers while you're at it, and then go all in on boom and zoom. The same goes for the last variant of the BF-109, the K-4. Just keep in mind that it has no bombs, so it's not really built for mixed battles. The BF-109Z-1 was the result of a desperate drive to create a stopgap heavy fighter to repel Allied bombers, but it never made it into actual full-scale production. Nevertheless, the prototype available in War Thunder is pretty good at its intended job. Four MK-108 cannons are very effective against slow-moving targets. At the same time, the Zwilling is way too heavy to engage regular fighters on its own terms, but its unorthodox layout and firepower make it a force to be reckoned with in head-on engagements. Finally, there's a unique variant of the BF-109 in the Israeli tech tree, the Czechoslovak Avia S-199. It's pretty much the BF-109G, but with a less powerful engine. As a result, this plane doesn't fly as well as the main models in the series. For instance, its maneuverability can only be described as mediocre at best. At the same time, the aircraft has enough firepower to be a lethal threat to any opponent it encounters. Two MG-151 cannons and two MG-131 machine guns are truly a deadly combo, even against bombers. The famed 109 series earned their place in the Aircraft Hall of Fame, and in War Thunder you could take every single plane we mentioned on the list and try them out for yourself. What's your favorite BF-109, by the way? Tell us in the comments below!